we shall commence this module by discussing about Indian federal system. In Indian federal system, the state government has less financial resources relative to their duties. The most of the state's government are facing deficit in their budget. They require the loan continuously to fill up the gap between income and expenditure. Therefore, state government loans are rising. Through public debt, the state government creates their extra financial resources. The public debt of state government in India is increasing both in absolute terms and in relative terms of GDP ratio. After 1980s, states public debt rose rapidly. This is creating financial problem to states. The states are paying the large amount of money as an interest payment of loans. This interest payment is decreasing the expenditure on other items of the state government budget. The composition of state debt shows that the central loans are still major part in total debt. Now these loans is coming down and the share of market loans and bonds are failing. While the provident fund and small saving loans are rising. It means composition of debt of state government is changing. The average cost of interest is shifting toward low cost, high cost interest payment items of borrowing. There are structural imbalances in the form of large revenue deficits, rising interest burden, increasing non-productive expenditure and very slow growing non-tax revenue are major problem for state's government. Due to this reason, consolidated financial position of the state government is becoming worse. In the era of liberalization and decentralization of economy to control the debt burden and increase the resources of state government is necessary to improve the various macro level indicators. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the financial resources of state government, understand about the deficit and debt structure, know about the effort to control the debt per GDP ratio, know about the expenditure responsibilities of state government. Let us now begin our discussion about the financial resources of state government. We can classify the state government financial resources into state tax revenue, share of central tax revenues, non-tax revenues, non-plan grants and plan grants. The state government can charge the taxes on state list of constitution, the taxes on land revenue, the taxes on agriculture income. Most of the state government are not charging these tax because the revenue collection is very less in comparison to the expenditure on revenue collecting administration. There are some political reasons also. The people who are earning from the agriculture either they are very poor or rich absentee landlord. The first are doing agriculture for survive and second for just collecting the rent. The agriculture income is a big source of creating black money in the economy. The taxes on land and buildings due to the rapid industrialization, the government is converting the agricultural land into the other purpose. The government is getting revenue from this conversion. The revenue is continuously increasing from the taxes. The taxes on mineral duties of excise on alcohol are important. The state government issues the license for this purpose and gets good revenue. The taxes on sale and purchase of goods other than newspapers. Earlier it was sale tax, now it have merged in value added tax VAT and in near future GST will take place of this tax. The taxes on goods and passengers carried by road, the taxes 
on vehicles and the transport department collect this tax. Now the number of vehicle is increasing in country. So it is giving good revenue to state government. The taxation on professions the area of these taxes is very large. But due to political reason the state government is unable to charge so much from this tax. The taxes on luxuries including on entertainment is also in state list. But importance of these taxes to collect the revenue is less. The state government use this tax for controlling purpose in placing to collect the revenue. The taxes on entry of goods into a local area. Due to decentralized policy, the tax revenue from this tax is going to local bodies. The government is transferring the revenue to infrastructure developer through public private partnership project. After all, it is providing enough financial resources to state government and taxes on advertisements other than those published in newspapers and broadcast by radio or television is increasing due to the growing market in India. The share of the state government in central government taxes. The finance commission determines the criteria behalf of the divisible share pool divide among the states. The state government revenue other than non-tax revenue. In this group, we include the state government public sector income, fees and fines and user charges of public sector services. After liberalization, government is trying to increase the financial accountability in various production of goods and services. The revenue from this resource is increasing. The central government grants and loans. The finance commission and earlier planning commission transfer some grants and loans to state government. The state government can take loans from internal sources. The borrowing from market, small saving and provident fund receipts are main sources of state government loans. Moving on to discuss about the resource problem of state government. The financial problem is a joint result of expenditure responsibilities and lack of resources. We have explained the financial resources of the states. After that, we are explaining expenditure side of problems. The classification of the expenditure responsibilities in plan expenditure and non-plan expenditure, the development and non-development, revenue and capital should finish because there is very thin line between them. We are using these term only for analyzing the expenditure, the revenue expenditure include to salary, pension, interest payment on liabilities etc. In the capital expenditure, the state government gives the financial assistance to various development project and plan in terms of loans are main component. The state government economic and social responsibilities are more in comparison to center government. The state government is under pressure due to large expenditure on the salary, pension, interest payment subsidies on various economic and social services and both merit and non-merit goods. So the expenditure over income is more of the state government in terms of percentage. The new pay commission any disaster and bad weather etc always worse the financial condition of the states. The change in structure of the debt is increasing the burden interest payment on states. Now let us understand the deficit and debt per SDP ratio. There is difference in definition of debts used by various government bodies. In Indian situation, the debts include to loans and advances from the center and provident fund, reserve funds and deposits. According to Richard Musgrave and Peggy Musgrave, public borrowing involves a withdrawal made in return for the government's promise to repay at 
a future date and to pay interest at the interim. The Article 294 state that the states can take loan from the internal source of the country. The states are taking loans from Government of India, commercial banking and non-banking market institutions, small saving and provident fund receipts etc. All the finance is a part of public debt. A state requires the loans to fill up the fiscal deficit, but the fiscal deficit in a given year should equal the sum of increase in debt. The fiscal sound states are in better situation in comparison of the fiscal weak states. The Finance Commission and Planning Commission gives a classification of special category states and non-special category states. They use this criteria to transfer the resources. This helps to monetize the state government deficit. The non-special category states are able to sustain the fiscal deficit in comparison to special category states. Generally, all the states are getting transfer from central government according to their fiscal discipline. But in some case, some states are getting more after the fiscal indiscipline. Some states are taking loans for special purpose which they are not showing in their budget. This loan will automatically include in liabilities. There is some unilateral loan which states never return. They are increasing the liabilities and states are paying the interest payment on them. The high proportion of interest payment in budget create budget deficit. So it has become a circle that deficit create debt and debt create deficit. Now we will move on to discuss about the control of debt. After 1980, the debt situation start to reach at critical point and the debt per GDP ratio is increasing. Now it have reached at 24% in 2014. The situation starts to become worse after 1980s. The central government should increase the transfers. But the central government transfer was based on various criteria and the state government traditional system was unable to control the situation. In 1990, the state government start to use the various financial techniques to finance their budget deficit. The traditional mechanisms for curbing excessive debt accumulation to control capital market risk, electoral disapproval and control debt through selling the assets have not provided significant impetus to fiscal correction. India's system of intergovernmental transfers have remained basically sound and it continues to provide a relatively transparent, predictable and rule-based framework. But that was unable to increase the enough transfers to control the situation. In this federal system, the horizontal efforts are insufficient to solve the problems of debt of states because there is large vertical imbalance between center and states. It may short term popular solution, but it cannot solve the problem in long term. The long term solution is resource transfer and decreases the responsibilities of state. Liberalization of economic markets and decentralization of the taxes power gives some opportunity to strengthen the financial situation of states. But broad based tax reform, financial market liberalization and banking sector liberalization have lagged far behind liberalization of the market for goods. Much additional reform in these subjects will be required to increase credit worthiness and more mature markets for state debt and policy regime changes succeed in dispelling the notion 
that future budget constraints for states and municipalities might soften. Subnational government is likely to become both more accountable and more effective in meeting society's public needs. Although debt obligation for most states are manageable with reasonable programs, efforts to date at fiscal correction have not been equal to the challenge. Now, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. The problem of financial resources of state is due to vertical imbalance of resources between center and states. Due to continuously financing of debt from loans, the debt per STP ratio have reached at 24%. The structure of debt is shifting from center loan to market and provident fund. There is vicious circle between debt and deficit due to increasing cost of debt. 